Um, thank you so much. Uh, happy International Women's Day. Good morning. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to mark International Women's Day, a day to celebrate the wonderful accomplishments of women, girls, and non-binary people in Canada and across the world. It's also important that we use this day to reflect on the inequalities women continue to face and the work that still needs to be done. Women in Canada are 10 times more likely than men to be the victim of police-reported sexual violence. Sexual harassment and violence against women can happen in the home, out in public, and in the workplace. Women who report sexual harassment and violence are often not listened to or taken seriously or are further victimized, making it hard for them to come forward. The Liberal government has proven through recent incidents that they are part of this problem. This government is starting to exhibit a reoccurring pattern of ignoring allegations of harassment against its top members. In 2018, the military watchdog brought a serious allegation of harassment by the most senior member of the Canadian Forces to the Minister of National Defence, and the Minister refused to even hear the evidence. That same year, SATSCAN conducted a survey on sexual misconduct in the Canadian Armed Forces, which backed the findings of the 2015 Deschamps report describing an underlying sexualized culture in the Canadian Armed Forces, hostile to women and LGBTQ members, and conducive to more serious incidents of sexual harassment and assault. The report stated that 75% of women in the Armed Forces have witnessed or experienced sexualized or discriminatory behaviours. The Liberal government promised to address this toxic culture, but have yet to back up their words with action. Women are tired of decades of Liberal and Conservative governments who choose to look out for the old boys club instead of standing up for them and ensuring their workplaces are free of harassment and violence. Thousands of women in the armed forces have been harmed by sexual harassment, and it's time this government did something to protect women in this country. Ultimately, it's up to the Prime Minister to ensure that all service women and men can have confidence that their reports of harassment will be taken seriously if they come forward. And I'm happy for your questions. And we'll now take questions, starting with questions on the phone. A quick reminder, one question, one follow-up. Nous allons maintenant passer aux questions, commençant par les questions au téléphone. Un petit rappel, une question, une question de suivi. Operator, do we have a first question? Thank you. Merci. Please press star 1 on your device's keypad if you have a question. S'il vous plaît, faites étoile 1 sur votre appareil si vous avez une question. Uh, there are no questions registered at this time. Il n'y a aucune question à ce moment-ci. All right, we'll take questions from the room. David? Hi, Madam Matheson. Thank you so much for taking our questions. Uh, happy International Women's Day. Thank you. Uh, I, I guess what is the way forward, do you think, for the Canadian Armed Forces and, you know, the Defence Minister to rectifying and taking these, these allegations against these top men within the military seriously? What is the way forward? So I think... Um, this is uh, there are there are so many uh, recommendations that have already come forward. So you have the the 2015 Deschamps report. Um, all of those 10 recommendations have to be implemented. Um, I think only a few thus far have they've acknowledged that they have been. Um, even in 2019, uh, the Status of Women Committee uh, put forward a report. They they studied and they said as well these uh, 10 uh, recommendations by Deschamps, but also additional recommendations have to be put forward. So. So I think that that's a good start. Um, but as well, to get at what we need to right now, we need to uh, further investigate this. I think that the work of the Defence Committee is key. Uh, I think that the Minister has to come before that Defence Committee. Um, and we need to have better access. Accountability has always been an issue with this government. Um, sadly, it is now. But really opening things up to see... Um, what uh, the PMO knew, uh, what the Prime Minister himself knew. Uh, he needs to be honest with Canadians. The Minister needs to be honest. And they need to take a look at, instead of protecting their friends and protecting their own, as they so often do in so many different examples, uh, they need to uh, stop burying their heads in the sand and they need to uh, get at that systemic issue of violence and harassment and gender discrimination and and 
now <laughs> they need to start immediately. Uh, they could have started long ago, but they need to start immediately to really get at what they need to. I mean, I'm curious, what did you think of what, the, the, I believe it's the former military ombudsman, Walborn at committee, yes. um, said when he brought that allegation to Minister Sajjan, and he basically took a step back, um, and the conversation ended there. What did you What did you make of that? That uh, of, of what um, Walborn had to say. What did you did, What did you make of that? I think that this was an incredibly dedicated civil servant who did his best to try and bring really serious issues forward and who wasn't allowed to. And, and he uh, tried uh, to, to make his position far more uh, influential because it has to be. It has to be independent. That is actually one of those recommendations from the Deschamps report, um, uh, that he has to have the independence to not be stymied at that political junction with the minister. Um, I think that he was, he was extremely frustrated and it's interesting. Uh, my mother was the member of parliament before me, uh, for my riding. Um, I'm incredibly proud. So I reach out to her to say happy international women's day to my mom. Um, but she met with Walburn at the time. She was on the status of women's committee when they issued that report. And he said, uh, he had told her that he had to resign, that he was stepping back. Uh, he couldn't tell her why, but she told me that she felt how disappointed he was, uh, how, um, powerless he felt to make the change that he needed to. And, and now we know the reasons why. Um, and I think that it's unacceptable that we're on to the next generation and we're still having to deal with these issues. So I, I am grateful to him for having the courage that the prime minister and that the, that the minister didn't seem to have to step up and, and bring this issue forward as well as the women, of course, who are stepping up and have the courage to, to do their job and to, and, and to put themselves out there and to stand up for, for not only them, some, themselves, but other, other women. Next question, Chris. Hi, Chris Reynolds, Canadian Press. Um, the government has said that they followed all proper steps when the former ombudsman raised the allegations against General Vance and that their hands were pretty much tied because uh, Gary Walborn would not provide more information about the specifics of the allegation. What, what more do you think should have been done in that circumstance? I think that they asked for those women's names. They asked for the specific woman's name. And he refused to give that to protect her because she had not given permission to come forward yet. But they could still investigate. Um, like I said before, this isn't an unknown issue. This is something that we've known about for years as a problem within the Canadian Armed Forces. They recognize it themselves. That's why the Deschamps report was issued, uh, was brought forward, uh, and, they, and they said that they wanted to implement those changes. Uh, the government needs to implement those changes. Those recommendations have been on the books for at least uh, six years now, of which the majority they have been, a majority government. Um, I, I think, uh, again, one of those key recommendations is, is for that position, that ombuds person, to have more power to, to respond or to um, report directly to Parliament. I think that's a, a key first step uh, that so many have asked for uh, to move forward with this, uh, to give that ombuds person um, more of that independent power to do the investigations. But um, there's clearly something missing here between the story that, that the minister has told and Walburn has told. There are clearly points here that the prime minister said he knew nothing about it, and yet his key top official knew. Um, and we need to get to the bottom of that. On that subject of independent investigation, the Erin O'Toole has suggested that a federal conservative government would uh, create an independent agency completely distinct from the military rather than under its umbrella to look into allegations or complaints of uh, sexual harassment or misconduct. Is that something that, that you would support? Um, New Democrats for, for a long, long time have, have called for that independence, that power of the ombudsperson to report directly to Parliament. That's key. And we need to support those commissioners far more, give greater power, whether it's, you know, it's the ethics commissioner or the lobbying commissioner. Um, we believe that those are key points within Parliament that need to have that independence to keep that accountability um, first and foremost. Because uh, unfortunately, 
previous governments, both conservative and liberal, have shown that they cannot be relied upon to do it themselves and police themselves. And a direct quote in the report uh, to the Status of Women Committee was exactly that, that those self-regulating, self-policing institutions, they don't work and you need that greater authority. So um, I believe, uh, of course, in an NDP government coming forward and implementing those independent commissioners and giving more power in that regard. And we'll now check on the phone if we have any questions. Operator. Thank you. Merci. Once again, please press star one on your device's keypad. De nouveau, faites étoile un sur votre appareil. We have a first question. It is from Cormac McSweeney, pardon me, from City News. Your line is open. Yeah, I just wanted to ask a little bit off the military angle of this, but, um, you know, we do have a spring budget coming up from the federal government. It is an International Women's Day. Uh, you know, number of reports have shown how much harder women have been impacted in this pandemic uh, than men. And I'm wondering what you're hoping to see in the spring budget in order to address the inequality and the, the way women have been hit harder in this pandemic uh, and try and make a more equal um, economic and societal situation for Canadians uh, in the recovery. Thank you. Yes. And actually, uh, the Status of Women Committee just uh, is finishing up and will be reporting to Parliament um, our study on the impacts of COVID on women. We saw across the board every single uh, witness, except uh, maybe one, said that they wanted universal child care. So <clears throat> the, the Liberal government has been promising this for 23 years now, um, almost as long as they were promising pharmacare. Um, they have made some suggestions in speeches, very nice speeches, uh, that have promised further child care and early uh, childhood education spending. Um, but I still don't see they're not they're not uh, putting in the money um, or they haven't promised the money that stakeholders, uh, key uh, experts in the field have asked for they, what they believe is necessary to get us not only past this pandemic, to deal with the pandemic, but to build onto a future national universal child care program. Um, what I would like to see as well is a commitment in legislation to that funding, a commitment across the board that there is a universal child care act to ensure, much like the Canada Health Act, to ensure that um, no matter where you live in this country, no matter who you are, uh, that you have access, that same access to, to affordable, safe childcare. Um, one of the key things that we saw in the report as well was unpaid care work and the recognition that women take on far more, both with children, um, uh, family members, elderly uh, members of the community. Uh, they take on that unpaid care work. So a recognition of that. Um, they need greater supports, women uh, and small businesses. They need greater supports in, in terms of the types of businesses that women um, run and the impact that that's had. Uh, frontline workers uh, and, and a fairer livable wage that they still have not received. Um, in addition, we need to see a shift from how we fund these things. And the New Democrats have brought forward key examples of a wealth tax, of closing tax loopholes. Um, people who have profited directly from the pandemic must pay for the recovery of that pandemic. Uh, we haven't had a government with the political courage to do so, to stand up to those strong, wealthy lobbyists, their political friends and allies. But uh, New Democrats are committed to ensuring that fairness, that wealth redistribution um, happens, and uh, we'll continue to fight for that. Um, but uh, the Harry and Meghan interview has caused a lot of waves uh, around the world. And I'm wondering what your reaction is to uh, the claims that they made in, in regards to conversations and things that happened to them and how they were treated within the royal family. And do you believe that this will spark a new conversation in regards to the role of the monarchy in Canada? A recent poll shows as many as 45 percent of Canadians uh, feel like we should be severing ties with the monarchy. Do you support that? Um, I, I welcome a further conversation, uh, for sure. And I think that it's interesting that this new generation of royals, um, is, is playing such, uh, a, an interesting role and, in, and in changing the way that we see things. But, um, yesterday's story, it, it, it was, 
horrible to hear what uh, they had to go through, what the um, what uh, Miss Markle had to go through. Um, again, I think this is just much like the the story we're talking about today with the Canadian Armed Forces. These are archaic institutions uh, that are dripping in systemic racism and uh, gender uh, discrimination and. Uh, and the problems that that has on on all kinds of mental health, I think that we need to address that. I think that we need to take a look at those institutions and how we uh, get to the bottom of it to, to ultimately change that status quo. And um, and I think that uh, I didn't hear the the direct conversation. I was I was you know preparing for today for International Women's Day, um, but I did hear reports, and I'm I'm quite uh, I'm quite happy that they they are bringing light to these issues in ways that we need to, again, on those, those old institutions that are buried in that tradition and that, and that old sense of protecting those in power. Operator, next question. Thank you, merci. Uh, prochaine question, Christian Noël, Radio-Canada, à vous. Bonjour, Madame Matheson, ça va bien? Oui, merci, ça va bien. Hmm. Voulez-vous essayer de répondre en français? Uh, <laughs> no, malheureusement. Or je... in English, that's fine. Merci. Um, first of all, let's continue on Harry and Meghan. So the, the, usually the party is pretty much not necessarily in favor of monarchy. What have you heard that makes your position even more entrenched maybe today? Um, actually, we, we continue to have discussions. There are those of us um, in caucus and in the party uh, who are on both sides. Um, I, I know that I hear from my constituents and they're on both sides. Uh, we're actually coming up on a, um, a convention, a policy convention, where I'm sure we will have discussions that are on both sides. I, I think, though, that like any institution, it needs to those, again, those, those, um, organizations that are so fundamentally entrenched in that old idea of power and money and holding on to power and money, they need to change. And we need to look at how we change them, how we challenge that status quo, um, how they, if they're going to survive, um, because they all, you know, the, the monarchy especially is highly rooted in uh, public opinion and, and they need that support of the public, how they will how they will choose to change um, and modernize, uh, address uh, what uh, Harry and Meghan have, have faced. Um, it could be a great opportunity for them to do so, to show leadership. Uh, this government has a great opportunity to show leadership on how we change those institutions. So I think I'll, I'll leave it right now for the conversation to continue and the debate to continue. Um, but I'm open to those. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Um, back to uh, the general events, uh, Gary Walborn, Arjit Sajjan, uh, part of your uh, presser this morning. Um, if the ex-ombudsman would not give the name of the person making the allegation, what could be done to further the, to further the investigation if you cannot contact the main person who's complaining? And second part to that, why do you think the prime minister might have known? So I think that a lot can be done without this, the specific name. I know that that within the media, you do a great deal with um, with protecting your sources, but not um, releasing names. Uh, I think that an investigation with the independence of an outside source, because this is one of the huge problems and that was pointed out by the Deschamps report, was that um, women who are victims of sexual assault, misconduct. They didn't feel that they that they had the protection because everything, all those investigations are within. In some cases, they found that they're, um, the people that they were accusing, uh, the people in their, in their uh, line of authority were part of the decision-making process. Um, these are problems. And so I think that with that independence of um, uh, the ombudsman, having someone look outside, taking it out of that Fear, but you can still not release a name, but you can still investigate the issue. The side of the, 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 the issue with the PMO, a key top official and aide in the PMO knew. And, and there, are, there are reports that, that they pass that information forward. So I'm not sure what the prime minister knew. 
But Canadians need to know, the electorate needs to know, and I think coming before committee um, and investigating that further is key. Operator, next question. Thank you. Merci. There are no further questions registered at this time. And we'll take one last question in the room. David? Hi, thanks. Me again. <laughs> Given all that you said, uh, what do you think when this prime minister says he's a feminist? When you hear those words out of his mouth, what do you think? I think he says a lot of pretty words. But it's the action. And we haven't seen that action. Um, I know that my heart sinks every time uh, something comes up where there is so much hope and there is so much promise. Uh, there are, again, these pretty words said that they have, that they're doing the best. And, and the minister, I've heard her say, the Minister of Gender and, and, and or Women and Gender Equality has said, you know, we're making slow progress. Well, in these cases, you're not. You're ignoring it. You're putting your head in the sand. And... Um, Again, those in positions of power have such an incredible responsibility. Um, they have such an opportunity to make the change that people so desperately need. Um, and to think about all the women. We've had six years no, of him. No. 23 years without childcare, 27 years without pharmacare, um, throne speech after economic update, um, but we haven't seen the actions actually take place. What we've seen is a further entrenchment in the status quo, uh, them giving money to those who give them money, uh, and that, that perpetual cycle of those holding on to power and not, not distributing that as they should, not what democracy deserves. It's, it's, it's a fundamental, and I have I've never had a lot of faith seeing government after government. You, you could talk about this government and the six years that they've had. You could talk about the Kretchen years and the 12 years that they had and so on and so forth. Um, so I think it's time for that change. Desperately needed change. Thank you. And this concludes the press conference.